Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar here today. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here with us, which is certainly going to be an action-packed uh, hour where we're going to showcase some very exciting new capabilities, both the Catalyst and with our partner, uh, Capella Space here. So we're very excited to discuss how to segment and extract features from the very high resolution and very beautiful Capella Star imagery. Before we go into the details of the webinar, we just want you to understand how best to engage with our team. So all of your lines are going to be muted by default during this webinar. However, if you wish to engage with our uh, panelists, you can do so by asking your questions directly in the questions panel. You can expand this section here, which will then open up an area where you can then type in your questions, which we will be monitoring throughout the webinar and answering your questions live as they come in. If we see a question that's very exciting, we will probably hold it to the end, where we will address it live in the question and answers period at the end of this webinar. If we can't get to your question, and we probably won't get to all questions through this webinar, we'll be sure to post the, the answers to all questions asked with the recording. I'd like to, at this stage, uh, invite all of the different panelists up to this webinar so that we can uh, do a brief introduction. Wonderful, welcome, Andrew. So good the first morning, person Tom. we have, good morning. So uh, the first person I'd like to introduce everyone to is our special guest from a Capella Space who's responsible for business development. We have Andrew Klipchuk here with us today. Good morning, everybody. Uh, pleasure to be here. Looking forward to chatting with Sean and Jason uh, about the Catalyst uh, tools and uh, how Capella Space is supporting it and uh, integrates. So this is gonna be an exciting webinar. Wonderful, thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, next, we have no stranger to these webinars. We have Jason Flatt, who is our solutions engineer, uh, and he's gonna be the one driving the, uh, the demonstration later on today. Welcome, Jason. Welcome, it's good to see everyone here. Looking forward to uh, showcasing the demonstration. Wonderful, thank you, Jason. And myself, my name's Sean Malamud. I'm a product marketing manager here at Catalyst, and I will be your host for today's webinar. And once again, I just would like to thank everyone, including our panelists and all the, those of you in the audience to this webinar here today. So we have an action-packed agenda for you uh, for, this, uh, for the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour or so. So we're gonna start off with a very brief introduction to Catalyst. We're then gonna talk about some of the new capabilities that have come out. So specifically the new Capella space SAR imagery that is now supported throughout our tech stack. Uh, we're then also going to discuss, uh, showcase some concepts about how you can combine Capella's data with their API and Catalyst solutions in order to reduce information latency and, uh, and applying that to very specific applications where information and timeliness is incredibly important. At, at which point I'm going to hand things over to Jason, who is going to showcase a demonstration on how we can further automate the TCPED workflow um, as it applies to uh, defense and intelligence applications. Uh, and then finally, hand things off to our special guest, Andrew, who's gonna talk about some value and applications of Capella Space imagery. And at the end, we're gonna finish things off with the questions and answer period, where you'll have an opportunity to ask your questions to our uh, team of panelists here today. So first I'd like to introduce Catalyst. Some of you may not uh, be aware, but PCI Geomatics introduced Catalyst as a new brand back in October of 2020. And the whole purpose is to bring information, geospatial information into the hands of the mainstream uh, business decision makers and audience in order to help improve and make sure that we provide a more sustainable and manageable planet. And in our latest release of Catalyst Professional and Catalyst Enterprise, we have introduced Capella Space SAR imagery into our portfolio. So why is this important? Well, Capella Space, as many of you are probably aware, you've seen the, uh, the posts, you've seen the media articles, they are capturing unprecedented level of detail and clarity through their SAR imagery, which is almost more akin to optical imagery, 
which allows us to capture even more detailed information and intelligence, but with the benefit of SAR data where we can capture it at night and through clouds. They're also continuing to grow their constellation, which is improving the revisit time, so the uh, ability to capture and refresh the data of different AOIs, and they have a consistent commitment or uh, a corporate commitment to low latency data. In fact, just the other, uh, just this past week, they launched one of their latest satellites, and even just yesterday, they captured some of their first imagery from one of their new satellites that, that was recently launched. Now this is incredibly important for a variety of different applications. Andrew later on in the webinar is gonna showcase uh, the, uh, a variety of different applications for Capella SAR imagery. Today we're gonna to focus on a particular use case around uh, reducing the latency of getting very timely information into the hands of decision makers as quickly as possible. And this is for applications where minutes can literally be the difference between very useful information that can potentially save lives to stale information that is no longer valuable. So low latency access to data is very important. It's a really important variable in this overall equation. However, it's really just one part of the overall requirement. So if our ultimate goal is to get the, uh, create a brief and get the information and the intelligence into the hands of the decision makers, if we simply just stop at the collection and the tasking of the data and the acquisition of the data, we're really missing an important piece of the overall uh, processing chain in order to complete this workflow and get to the finish line, which in this case is the brief itself. And this is where Catalyst comes in, is that we can work with data sources such as Capella in order to help complete this workflow and automate uh, as much of the workflow as possible in order to create the information into the brief and complete this overall workflow and reducing the latency using our value or using our machine learning capabilities uh, in order to extract information in a more automated process, which is what we're going to showcase here today throughout the demonstration. In terms of reducing latency to your entire data pipeline, this can be done by combining the valuable data and API capabilities of Capella with uh, the API and processing and analytical capabilities of Catalyst. And we're gonna be showcasing how this can be applied to the TCPED cycle, which is the task, collect, exploit, and disseminate. Uh, and we're gonna showcase using Capella, how they can automate the tasking and the co collection through their API, as well as how, and then how we can automate the image processing and exploitation uh, with uh, and reducing the manual efforts using Catalyst's uh, library of solutions. So let's just take for a moment this uh, data pipeline. So here we have a complete TCPED data pipeline, which starts from the tasking component, works its way through collection, process exploitation, and then dissemination. So if we drill a little bit deeper into the task and collect, we can see that there's a variety of different capabilities uh, that allows us for, uh, allows for a tip and queue concept using Capella's API uh, integrations. So this is where you can automatically set up your, your task schedules, and then you can automatically pull the resulting scenes from their API and then push them through into your data pipeline. This then moves over to the uh, processing and exploitation part, which is where Catalyst really comes in. And this is where we can take the Capella imagery that has been received and, and automatically um, delivered through their API this can then automatically connect into our pipeline where we can complete or perform more automation in order to extract useful uh, information and, and start to exploit the, uh, the data. This is where we can perform things like automatic uh, segmentation. And then if we've already collected, and this is a really neat concept that Jason's going to show, is that when we already have training sites that have been collected from previous uh, uh, data sources or from pre previous Capella scenes uh, in this AOI, we can then use those as an input to then create a fully automated feature extraction workflow where we can then extract different types of entities over a area of interest. In this case, we're working over an airfield. At this point, then there's the dissemination part, which is then how do we get the information from 
uh, from the layers from the feature ex or the extracted layers and then get them into a report format that then can, can then be used for a briefing. And then we have a variety of tools and capabilities that can help automate this, as well as quality assurance tools. So while the exploitation and the automation process is very important to minimize and reduce the effort, uh, manual efforts, it may still be important within your workflow to have a manual intervention or a quality assurance step to just validate the information that's being uh, provided in the briefing. And we have a variety of different capabilities and tools to showcase that. So at this point, I'm going to hand things over to Jason, who is going to walk us through the demonstration where we're going to showcase this concept of TCPED and how we can help further automate this uh, throughout um, for your data to automate your data pipeline. Thanks. Take Thank, it away, Jason. Thank you so much, Sean. So hello, everyone, again. So I just want to briefly give an overview of the demonstration first before I dive into it. So I just want to quickly talk about how Catalyst provides image processing and analytics capabilities that can be applied uh, to satellite imagery to automate information extraction in support of the military information intelligence gathering process. Our software is sensor agnostic and reduces the need for manual analysis by automating uh, analytic processing. This can help with the tipping and queuing of other assets and thereby shortening that TCPED cycle. So I'm just gonna get out of the, the PowerPoint and I wanna look at a specific use case uh, first. Uh, this is an area, this is a, a the Dingxing uh, Air Force Base in China. Um, so as there are uh, growing concerns around China's continued military expansion and activities, uh, there's a requirement for continuous monitoring and timely updates uh, to be generated. So our location of interest here uh, at the Air Force Base, which is considered to be one of the most advanced Air Force bases in China. And just a, a little bit of information about this location is that uh, the base is located in the Gansu province in the Gobi Desert. And it's been a long term, it's been a military and weapons testing stronghold for the People's Liberation Army. So it makes it an ideal location uh, for uh, long term monitoring. So our first step uh, for this monitoring uh, could be just to develop a macro level um, understanding. We can leverage open source information first, such as Google Earth, free optical and radar imagery, published articles, to develop our macro level understanding of the base. So first I actually want to showcase just a quick Google article, or article I found from Google, that actually goes into detail about the Air Force Base itself. And so it talks a little about the different the layout, the history of the base, for instance. It goes into detail about the kinds of airplanes that are usually at the base as well. And one interesting uh, point, so I scroll down here, it talks about potentially a weapons testing uh, and development location. So with that information, uh, along with the other open sourced information, I, we can then create a several supporting layers. So at first, what we have here is just more of a perimeter area covering 25 kilometers square of the entire Air Force Base. We can then identify the primary run, the runways. So we have the primary one for airplanes, drones. Uh, down at the bottom, we have the concrete one and the taxiways. And as mentioned before, I'll scroll, zoom in. We have that testing and development center that the article mentioned. And if we even zoom in from the Google Earth image, you can see all of those different planes, uh, different stages of, of repair or development. And of course, we have the, the apron itself, where all the military planes, such as those larger transports, those fighter jets, are all um, parked and located. So by fam but the idea of, of this macro level is if fam by familiarizing ourselves or gives us this familiar familiarity of the area so that when we actually begin processing and analyzing the compelling imagery, it gives us just more context to build our, into our workflow so that we can then make smarter decisions. So now I wanna jump into, well, the micro level itself. Um, here we have just, the um, our first image acquired over the base and I can utilize our machine learning object based classification technology to automatically extract and identify the different types of features specifically along the apron uh, with our classification results I'm just going to open them right now 
Uh, what we see, I've classified the red objects as buildings, the blue objects as the smaller fighter planes, uh, I can zoom in here, and those larger objects in green as the, uh, the larger planes. And if we even open up the uh, Google Earth image, this this initial analysis can just give us some idea of the, the life of the base, some of the activity. Um, so where the larger planes are located is more on the left side of the apron, while those smaller fighter jets are on the right side. And from this, we can make analysis, uh, perform analysis, uh, see how far the distance between different buildings it would be to the fighter jets to make assumptions on maybe time of it would take for uh, pilots to get to their, their jets. But now the thing is, is we want to continually monitor the area as it's been, so it's beneficial for us to reduce the amount of processing time and manual hours invested into the image. So by reducing that, the analyst time itself, it means that the decision makers can acquire the information sooner. So this can help our object-based approach offers the capability of automatic processing that will reduce the number of manual hours required. Uh, we can then leverage the training sites and the classification uh, results from the first image, as Sean talked about before, and applied in a pipeline to process a stack of images, which enables us to, uh, to acquire constant monitoring and identification of the area. Um, so what this whole the whole idea is just to identify the pattern of life over the the area itself so what i want to do is now open up and select an image stack so i just have two images right now one was collected on december 30th 2020 and the uh, second one was on january 27th 2021 so very recent and just looking at the two images themselves you can see as i cycle through i'm going to turn one and on one on one off and visually, we can see that there's change. Some of the planes are moving. So either they're flying or there's, and so they're leaving and they're coming back to the same location. New planes could be uh, coming in. In fact, if I scroll all the way to the right, you can see a new plane has landed here too. Now, utilizing a temporal stack that can actually tell us, well, is that plane just there for a moment? Is that in the process of moving? Or is that a plane's new permanent spot? So utilizing the stack, I'm just gonna showcase some of the results. Utilizing the same representation, uh, I'm gonna first turn on the December 30th, and immediately we can see uh, the green, larger airplanes, and while the blue, those smaller planes. And as I turn that one off, and the, the January one, again, we can see that the, the results are a bit different because and based on the uh, December one, but now looking at the January, we can see the classification results. And of course, all the way to the right <laughs> has identified that little fighter jet. So now that I would like to just spend a, a few minutes just to show how I was able to classify these images. So we can utilize the automatic classification with either our Python API, all the tools we have available have an underlying Python API, so that could be easily integrated into your own current workflows. But for this instance, we also have a GUI interface in Focus itself, which we can use uh, for this presentation. And the idea is that compared to like status quo, where a user would manually have to draw the objects, we want to get these results faster. So this is a way to reduce that latency that Sean mentioned before, so it gets the results faster. So what I want to first do is I'm going to go to our North Apron layer area. I have designated that little AOI of the apron that we created before from the macro level. Um, I'm going to open up our object analyst in here. This is where we can perform our object-based classification. Uh, we can perform the segmentation, the attribute calculation, training site collection, and the actual classification itself. One thing I want to note about the segmentation, for instance, is we, we offer ways to reduce the amount of pre-processing. So for segmentation, we automatically can perform tail trimming, which just removes outliers uh, from the image and also um, filtering as well. So that enables users, for instance, to not have to actually perform those actions before analysis. So that just first enables them to save time, but also reduce the amount of storage space not needed because it's done on the fly itself. 
So I just want to showcase the results of this this first training image first. Uh, so I'm going to turn off the the AOI. So I've performed my segmentation. I've created those different unique objects. I've then performed a training site collection. For this, I've just done two classes. What is the is the apron, which is green, but reflectors, so things that are very bright, are red. And I then performed that classification, which utilized the attributes collected from the image. So we collected statistical, geometrical, texture measurements, uh, along with the training sites to then perform that classification. And this generates a training model, which can then be used for the batch. And it's very simple. I'm going to open up Object Analyst again. I'm going to select our batch classification operation here. I am pointing to a location of an output location. I have an, an out or uh, sorry, an input location of all the images I want to work with. I can provide an output location. So I can go down here. I can select a new one. Output two, for instance. I have the training model. I will then add it in, and all the operations you run with in the uh, in the in object analyst are documented in the canvas and so you can then select which operation you uh you could potentially run multiple segmentations and select the segmentation that generate the best results and just add it to the batch along with the attribute calculation and the classifier and then quickly i can right click and select run and it's just right now it's segmenting that image performing uh based on that aoi and Performing those uh, pre-processing uh, requirements. So it's just going to take like, less than 15 seconds. Wow, it's done. And this is just the result I want to show. So here we have the uh, the image the image that I processed. We have the segmentation along with the classification results. So the blue is the apron, while the red is the reflectors. And then we can dissolve that. And from here we can utilize the heuristics of the, uh, the attributes of the segments to then identify the type of reflector. So buildings or larger planes or um, uh, smaller fighter jets. And what we can also do is create, a, for instance, accounting measurements. So we can create um, reports to just document for each image how many small planes were identified, how many larger planes were identified, just as one very basic example. <laughs> um, lastly, one thing I would like to talk about and show is just the spotlight image as well. So we're using strip map for this process, but if we want a higher resolution product as well, we can utilize the spotlight. This is their uh, Capella Spotlight Geo product, but we can immediately see that high resolution of the, the larger airplanes uh, at the far left. And based on our previous results, we do see that trend where the larger planes are on the left and the uh, smaller fighter jets are on the right. So it's a really beautiful, high-resolution product. So in summary, uh, we can utilize object-based classification with Capella imagery to extract the features of, of, of importance uh, so quickly and effectively so we, the decision makers can get the results soon and faster, sooner and faster. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jason. Um, so actually, we'll just leave it on this uh, slide for a second, and I'm just going to uh, recap some of the things that you just saw Jason work through. So he showcased the concept of how you can automate your uh, task, collect, process, exploit, disseminate cycle, really focusing on the process and exploit uh, components. And uh, really was the main purpose of, the, of this demonstration was to show how we can leverage open source data with Capella data in order to add more context into our processing pipeline in order to improve the automation and improve the amount of uh, detail that we get back from the uh, feature extraction, in which case he was able to identify the different types of buildings, uh, identify different types of planes in the sense of the very large likely carrier planes to the small fighter jets, um, and then be able to export that as a report in a fully automated uh, pipeline. So uh, with that, uh, we're gonna move on to our next uh, section, which is, we're gonna engage with our audience and uh, we're gonna run a survey question. So I'm just gonna launch this right now. And really the question is, are you interested in automating your data processing pipeline? So yes, for SAR imagery, so you're looking at processing or automating this for SAR data, 
uh, yes, for optical imagery, or yes, you're looking at combining optical with SAR imagery, um, and no, really just here to learn. So all of them are valid answers, but we'd love to hear from you. And as this is a SAR-related uh, webinar, we're, we're certain that there's going to be a number of people interested in automating their SAR workflow. So uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, already have about 50% of the people online have already voted. So we're going to keep the uh, keep the poll open for another 10 seconds. So if you haven't voted, please get your vote in now. We'd love to uh, understand what you're looking at uh, 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 automating. And with that, I'm going to close the poll in about three, two, one. All right, let's take a look at the results. So we can see that uh, we have an overwhelming amount, 49% uh, has decided or uh, stated that they're really looking at optimizing a data processing or automating a data processing pipeline for optical and SAR imagery, which is a common, um, a common uh, a sentiment that we're seeing these days. We have uh, then 16% said really just for SAR only. It makes a lot of sense that there's not as many people looking for optical as this is a SAR focused uh, webinar. And then we do have a number of you here who are just here to learn, which is great. So with that, uh, we'll move on and uh, close this. And we're going to move things forward and uh, introduce our special guest, who is going to showcase uh, some of the many advantages and applications of Capella Space SAR imagery. So with that, I'm going to hand things over to you, Andrew. Super. Thanks, Sean. Uh, pleasure to, to be here with you guys this morning and with everybody uh, attending the webinar. So, Andrew Plipchuk, uh, I've been in Earth observation for uh, a little over 20 years now. Um, started out in SAR, funny enough, and, and come back around to work at Capella Space and work with uh, another SAR vendor uh, once again. So, nice to come full circle. Um, but in between here and there, I uh, worked as a private consultant uh, across a number of industries that are quite typical of earth observation, mining, oil and gas, forestry, uh, agriculture and, and defense and intelligence. But um, from that point, I uh, also worked with a number of operators, so MDA, RapidEye, Planet and uh, here at Capella Space. So had quite the, the variety through my career and, and a number of, of great perspectives. So. Um, just talking about Capella Space and, and working with Catalyst, you know, the feature extraction, Jason did a great job talking about uh, segmenting the imagery and classifying uh, different bits and pieces and pulling out the features that, that folks are most interested in. Uh, what I'll talk about here is a little bit about Capella, who we are, what we're all about. Talk about our, our SAR small sat constellation, some imagery use cases, uh, touch on analytics and, and hand it back to Sean and Jason to kind of wrap up the webinar. So in terms of a company overview, I mean, we're here to talk about SAR and and I think Sean mentioned it quite well early on, you know, what is SAR all about? What are some of the advantages of SAR? Of course, with optical data uh, using the sun's uh, illumination uh, of the earth to image, um, quite often, you know, the nighttime side of the earth is is not able to, to be collected. We got cloud cover, smoke haze, all sorts of atmospheric issues that are blocking the ability to collect an image. With SAR, as most of you all know, it's an active sensor. We are sending out a radar signal and then we are imaging uh, the, the signal we receive back that we've sent. So 100% uh, observable time. Uh, we image through cloud and smoke. We image at night and day. Um, and uh, the Capella company, uh, as we get into the next side, we're really focused on that high latency or low latency, high reactivity, uh, market space um, and and really re changing the way folks are ac accessing Earth observation data. So that frequent revisit, all weather, anytime capabilities, high resolution data, uh, and fast order to delivery uh, from a customer perspective. Um, from a company history point of view, we were founded in 2016. Uh, we prototyped uh, a new type of uh, SAR sensor and, and satellite design. Uh, from there, we, we received uh, a couple contracts to get us off the ground and actually build it and get it to space. Um, and then here in 2020, uh, we launched our, our, our first uh, commercial operating satellite uh, in 2021 here. We're at four satellites now, so uh, coming a long way. We got three more satellites to go in, in our first uh, batch of, uh, of the constellation. 
um, where are we located now? We've grown quite a bit over the last uh, last little while, but we have a headquarters in San Francisco. Uh, we have another uh, large office in Boulder, and then we have presence uh, across the globe uh, as we work with uh, partners and customers. Um, and speaking of that, I mean, our, our customer base is is quite uh, broad now. Uh, we have uh, government customers, not only in the U.S., but across the world. Uh, commercial industry is picking up our imagery quite strongly uh, across a number of sectors, which we'll touch on in, in the follow-on slide. And we're at over 70 partners, and that includes resellers as well as analytics providers around the, uh, around the globe. And finally, to help build support uh, for our data in the SAR market in general, um, we have open data collaborations with NGOs, academia, and, a, and we have our own open data community. So uh, if, if you folks are, are interested in looking at our data but not quite ready to commit um, or have an application in mind, um, definitely reach out to us to get into our open community. We have uh, a number of images available uh, under the Creative Commons license. Moving on to our technology. So, you know, when we were first founded in 2016, I mean, one of the big questions is how can we do this better? How can we do this different than the traditional method? Um, as we all know from a number of, of perspectives, not just SAR, but optical as well, um, miniaturization is, is a big thing now that's enabling a, another space race. And so we as well thought, hey, we can do a, a SAR satellite 10 times smaller. Uh, reduce the cost, increase the number of, of satellites in orbit, and, and really um, turn turn this around and, and really serve the market in a new way. Uh, along with that, of course, is, is a software platform, which we'll get to, but um, our SAR technology, our SAR satellites, is really based around X-band. Um, our first generation of satellites are, are doing horizontal send and receive, so single pole data, um, and our imaging bandwidth is up to 500 megahertz, so that's kind of driving the resolution of our data and, and how how we're able to show that um, we're imaging in ascending and descending orbits and we can go right and left looking um, from this we generate three products and here's a real cool shot or uh, uh, I guess a diagram of what our satellites look like so pretty unique uh, in the sense that uh, it's a unfolding umbrella from a bus with a um, uh, the radar boom kind of sticking out and sending the signal and doing the reflection off the umbrella. So uh, very innovative, uh, brings the, the weight of the satellite down and, and really allows us to put a, more satellites in orbit and, and drive the costs down for the users. As we look at going from the hardware side into the software side and, and how we interact with you as the customers, one of our big innovations is really around the rapid response and quick delivery. So that order to delivery um, ground segment portion. Uh, one of the big blockers that I'm sure you guys as users have found is actually ordering the data is difficult. You might need to contact somebody, you might need to sign some papers, uh, so forth. One of the things that we've done for high reactivity is create a, a user-driven uh, platform. And so you as users um, are able to task the satellites, um, you know, look at where, where accesses are possible and make those decisions. Our schedule runs on a very frequent, um, you know, uh, cadence. So we're able to confirm your order uh, in under 30 minutes. And then we're also one of the only companies that's using satellite to satellite communications. So we have a geo relay within Marsat. As soon as your order is confirmed, even if satellites are not over a ground station, um, the ground stations are talking with Inmarsat, Inmarsat is talking with our satellites. Those tasking requests are uploaded to our satellites uh, in under an hour. So really high uh, reactivity, um, getting your requests onto the, on board onto the satellites as soon as possible. Of course, there's a transit time and an imaging time, and depending on, on your priority and, and what kind of urgency you've ordered the data with, um, we'll collect the data based on, on those parameters. And then we are AWS's first uh, ground, se ground station, ground segment partner. So when AWS uh, made their announcement a couple of years back that they're getting into uh, supporting the space industry, they were starting off with us. And so we're downloading our data with KSAT and AWS. Our data is then processed on AWS and delivered off of AWS. So um, I think we are all quite familiar with, with uh, their uh, cloud services. Um, and 
when I talk about, you know, handing the keys over to the users, um, we do this in two ways, by API and as well by a web interface. Here's kind of an overview of what the web interface looks like. And what Capella's done here is, is really quite amazing. Um, we've really uh, opened up the opportunities and, and the ability for users to understand uh, what is going on with satellite tasking and, and their particular areas of interest. Um, as you get into the console, you can drop a pin over your AOI. Right away, we can tell you exactly when satellites are gonna be passing over that location. No other vendor is doing this. Um, it is very uh, unique to, to Capella, and it's one of the things that I think lends itself to SAR because weather and other factors are really not blocking our ability to tell you when satellites pass over your AOI. Um, once you've actually submitted an order and, and it's been accepted by the, the collection system, we again, we're exposing a predicted uh, tasking time. So based on the feasibility and any other orders in the area at the time of, of order acceptance, we're telling you, hey, the next available time that our satellite's gonna be able to collect your area of interest is this date and time. Um, again, very unique because again, SAR data is, is not affected by a number of factors that, that typically will mask this for uh, an optical vendor, for example. Um, once the image is tasked, that's all updated, all these uh, user type uh, order flow pieces um, are, are exposed to you as the customer. So you know when the image is tasked, when it's collected, uh, when it's in processing, delivery, uh, if there's any anomalies, these kinds of things, all this information is available to you and, and it actually happens in quite a rapid fashion. You might miss it unless, of course, you have some notifications programmed through the API. So our web interface is based on the same API that you get as a customer, um, but all these features are, are available to you through the API. And, and as, as Jason mentioned, um, you know, we plug directly into uh, softwares like Catalyst to enable a, a much faster automated workflow. So from our API, again, you can task the satellites, you can understand when is a satellite gonna pass over an AOI before you task it, you can make some decisions on what priority of imagery you want, um, and and does it fit your, your particular requirements uh, to, to get an image collection. Um, once all of that is done, um, what are we actually delivering at the end of the day? And the, that, of course, is imagery, um, which goes into, into to the folks at Catalyst. Um, we offer three product modes or three image modes on our satellites. Capella is focused on very high resolution data, and so our, our modes are very tight in, in the sense that our strip map mode is a 1.2 meter product, our site mode is a one meter product, and our spotlight mode is a 50 centimeter product. So not a whole lot of, uh, of resolution variation between the three image modes, um, but as we get a little bit deeper into how the products are generated, there's a bit more difference in, in noise floor and um, detail in the sense that our strip map mode is a single look uh, image and our site mode is uh, as an option in the GEO or GEC product, uh, a multi-look image where we've actually stared at the target, collected a couple of images, and then done some pre-processing to merge the collections and, and reduce the NESZ values to, to create a much cleaner uh, data set for you. And finally, of course, the spotlight mode in its GEO or GEC product format, uh, again, has that multi-look technology uh, where we've actually taken nine images or about a 30-second clip of, of staring at a target to create this, this format. Um, all of this is, uh, you know, leads to, as Sean mentioned, uh, imagery that is very optical-like in nature. So, you know, as, as folks are looking at SAR data, typically, you know, it's quite intimidating. It, it doesn't look the same as optical. Uh, one of the things that we've heard uh, resoundingly from the market is, wow, Capella's imagery, it looks like a black and white optical image. I can understand this. I can really use this quite easily. Uh, I think added to that, you know, folks at Catalyst and, and their analytics really makes it uh, also uh, that much easier to use in, in today's marketplace than, than it was, say, when I started in SAR 20 years ago. And last but not least, um, 
in addition to our standard products and our standard image modes, uh, we offer uh, through both the API and the console the ability to do a lot of customization. So when when you are tasking, if you have very specific uh, parameters in terms of either look direction or uh, ascending, descending, or a particular um, you know off nadir or or look angle that you're looking for when you're imaging an area. Um, yeah, as, as SAR experts um, might understand some of these these factors. Um, all of these are, of course, uh, available to, to you folks to, again, enter the, the parameters on your own, um, make those decisions. Uh, this will, of course, impact the number of revisits or the, the number of access times, but again, um, as you enter this information, the the access times are all updated uh, through the the two interfaces, and you're able to understand, hey, if I restrict my look angles or or my my orbit direction, um, this is how it's going to impact my my revisit time, and is that a trade-off that works for my particular business and use case? Um, as we kind of get through to the end of of talking about products, um, we're offering this in a, in a couple different formats. Uh, of course, most folks that that work with SAR data are familiar with SLC data. Um, this is uh, this contains phase information as well as uh, a number of other bits and pieces that that allow people to do processing. Uh, this is what Jason and, and the Catalyst team were using when they were doing their uh, analysis and, and segmentation. Um, and then we also offer geo products. So this is the the product that has been rectified, corrected, and uses the multi look technology. Uh, we'll shortly be releasing a, an intermediary product called GEC, where we're not doing the train correction, but we're doing a, an ellipsoid correction, and that allows us to uh, provide a product that has some of the SLC properties in, the, in terms of maintaining uh, the image structure as it was taken by the satellite, um, but we're able to um, map correct it and put it in, in roughly the right um, geographic space uh, without doing that terrain correction. Uh, this also allows us to, to offer that product with the multi-look technology and, and the better NESC values uh, that, that folks might be looking for as they're doing different types of, of classifications and, and image processing. Um, so in terms of imagery use cases, um, I think most folks are familiar, imagery is used in a number of imageries across the board. Uh, SAR is also equally applicable uh, as optical. Um, definitely, you know, I think uh, when you think about SAR being able to guarantee an image in any condition, um, it lends itself to particular applications, but at the end of the day, uh, so long as the, the data that's collected um, answers the questions, um, that's really what's most important. You know, where are we seeing a, a lot of great, uh, great activity? Defense and intelligence is a primary market. Uh, maritime domain, domain awareness, disaster response, agriculture, uh, economic and financial uh, development, uh, humanitarian NGOs, oil and gas mining. Uh, a number of these applications most people are, are quite familiar with, but def definitely happy to talk more uh, on any of these um, after the webinar or, or answer questions in, uh, in the Q&A. Um, as we look at a couple examples, um, you know, in that context of intelligence brief, uh, here's here's a, an image of Bandar Abbas. This is one of my personal favorites. Um, it really highlights some of uh, SAR's unique capabilities and, and Capella's unique capabilities with the spotlight data. So here on the on the left, we have a clip out of the airbase. Uh, what I personally find most interesting here is you're actually able to see. Um, difficult, I don't know if the cursor shows up uh, in the webinar, but um, we're actually able to see the chain link fence uh, that that wraps around the air base. You know, we all know a chain link fence is much smaller than 50 centimeters, uh, but it stands out in the SAR imagery quite well, and, and it really shows up. Um, as we look uh, towards the naval port, uh, we're able to identify the different types and classes of warships. Uh, what's really neat about uh, this particular image in the bottom right corner uh, of that clip out, we actually see one of Iran's midget subs. So this is a submarine that is about one, one and a half meters wide by 20 meters long. Um, very difficult to capture that size of object uh, on the surface. Um, it comes out in, in Capella's imagery quite well, and um, this is, you know, this is the kind of uh, imagery object detection that that folks are are seeking and 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 looking for when they see this kind of data. 
as we look uh, at other areas, uh, here's a great example that, that we were able to collect on the India-China border, uh, where we see, saw uh, a platoon of tanks getting moved into, into place. Um, and not only can we see the tanks moving uh, along the road, around the roadway, but we actually see them getting deployed. We see the turrets, we see how they're all kind of uh, grouped and, and, and how they're getting set up by, by the team there. So again, very interesting, uh, you know, scenario here where the 50 centimeter data is, is able to show a great amount of detail um, to the point of, of, of showing, you know, how the tanks are laid out, which direction the, the turrets are pointing and, and so forth. So um, very exciting imagery from from our point of view. Um, definitely, uh, you know, feel for the the folks that are in that region and, and involved in, in any particular conflicts. Um, looking more at the humanitarian use case, again, you know, SAR being able to image through smoke and, and cloud and haze. Uh, we collected uh, some uh, some of the eruption of Saint Vincent. Um, great. Great imagery here of the volcano, absolutely beautiful and stunning, but able to see uh, well into into the volcano through all of that uh, smoke and ash. And then kind of close to home here, uh, Fort Simpson and, and what we typically have every spring in, in Canada, uh, river ice dams. So um, ice blockages on rivers and, and as the spring melt comes along, uh, those those ice blockages literally form a dam on the river and and flood communities um, all around Canada annually, unfortunately. Uh, so we were able to to collect this one up in Northwest Territories. Um, I was personally involved in in kicking this off, so it was exciting for me to see that from the time we put in the tasking on I think it was Wednesday afternoon, uh, the following morning. Uh, we had this beautiful uh, site image, one meter image of, of Fort Simpson. So under 12 hours from order to collection and, and data delivery. Um, very, very uh, great responsiveness there. Um, and that's really, I mean, I think that that kind of covers off some of the basic use cases. Definitely happy to speak more on, on any particular vertical, oil and gas, mining, uh, agriculture, forestry, whatever the case may be. Um, definitely there's there's places where the imagery fits really well and and so does that responsiveness. Um, finally, just wanted to touch on analytics and and I know um, Sean and, and Jason will touch on this as well as as we wrap up the webinar, but Capella's footprint size, our, our very high resolution data is, is small. And so one of the things that we've realized to, to help customers understand uh, what is happening in, in their regions uh, we've leveraged uh, Sentinel-1 data on a change platform within Capella. Uh, we're doing some change analysis on the Sentinel-1 data as well as Capella data to offer a tip and queue scenario where people might want to monitor you know, a much larger area, the state of California, province of Ontario, or monitor, say, the border between uh, like China and India in, in that example and understand where, where are changes occurring and where should I queue up Capella's uh, VHR data to go investigate uh, those changes and really understand uh, what's going on and, and create that, that analysis and workflow that, that Jason highlighted. Um, so this is something that, that's currently in, in a beta stage and, and that we're building out here towards the end of the year to help folks uh, leverage our data to the best of its ability. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the Catalyst team. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Andrew, for that, uh, that wonderful presentation. There's a lot of questions that came in that uh, we're going to uh, get to uh, for Andrew at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the presentation, at the end of the webinar, during our, our allocated uh, question and answer period. Uh, at this point, we're going to open up one more survey question. So this is the final survey question here and just uh, get everybody engaged again. So we're interested to understand what are you using or planning to use SAR imagery for? So we'll launch the, uh, launch the survey and the different possible options are defense and intelligence, maritime domain awareness, disaster response, agriculture, or other. And if it is other, please specify in the questions panel uh, what application you're looking at using it for. In this case, only select one, so select the one that most applies. All right, we're getting a number of different uh, results already coming in. We have a majority, just a small majority, are looking at disaster and response with then a large group also defense and intelligence. Uh, it's actually pretty split evenly across the board. Uh, 
around agriculture and then others. So we're looking forward to hearing what uh, some of the other applications you're interested in as well. All right, with that, we've got already over, uh, well over half of the people have already voted. So if you haven't voted, please get your votes in now. We're going to close the poll in approximately five seconds. All right, so you can get your final votes in now. Three, two, one, all right. So let's take a look at the results here. So we can see that uh, majority of people right now, just a small majority, is uh, disaster response, so at 27%, followed by agriculture, and then defense and intelligence. And then there's a number of people that are looking at other applications. And just looking at some of the examples that have come in, we have uh, measuring tree heights, minerals and mining, infrastructure monitoring, um, overall mapping, teaching. So thank you so much for, for your response and your engagement here. Okay, so just to conclude the, um, the webinar here, we're just going to talk about how we uh, how you can leverage Catalyst SAR capabilities with Capella data. So we have, as Jason already showcased, we have enhanced viewing and on-the-fly orth rectification for SLC data, which uses uh, state vectors to automatically orth rectify and, and position this imagery uh, right on the fly, which makes it very easy to work with. It also makes it very easy to work with other, uh, other data sources, such as optical and vector data. We have also advanced pre-processing capabilities, which is made possible and made very simple because we're automatically uh, extracting valuable or useful metadata information and then converting it into information that can then be leveraged and exploited uh, for various processing and analytical applications. As we showcased here today, Jason showcased an example of using our SAR-specific support for object-based image analysis where you can utilize an automated workflow or build an automated workflow that leverages uh, training sites and training data in order to automatically learn and extract features uh, based on uh, future imagery that's provided into the pipeline. And then, of course, we have other capabilities such as coherent change detection amongst a variety of other algorithms within our product suite. Uh, if you wish to learn more about our solution, so you can subscribe. So uh, as mentioned, this capability is now available to our desktop suite, Catalyst Professional, which is now um, available through subscriptions. And uh, you can access it on our website. And this also gives you access to the API in the back end. If you wish to access a free trial, you can go to catalyst.earth product slash catalyst pro. So I'll put the link into the, uh, into the chat and you can uh, access a free seven-day trial of our solution. And of course, reach out to us if you have any questions and you'd like to understand a little bit more about what's possible with SAR data, particularly Capella and Catalyst Solutions. So with that, we're going to hand things over. So I'm going to invite, once again, our panelists back onto the stage so that we can uh, spend a few moments to answer some of the many questions that we had come in. So there's Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get to all of the questions here, but we have a variety of questions and uh, we're going to get to uh, as many as we can. So once again, if I can invite the panelists back on stage and uh, we can get through some of these questions here. So the first one I'm going to actually hand off to uh, you, Andrew. So there was a number of questions that came in from our, uh, from our different uh, viewers around uh, just understanding a little bit more about what's possible and how to access the Capella data. So just going to find uh, a good one here. And apologies while I just, there's just a huge list of data sets or of questions here. So Andrew, this is a good, uh, a good question. I think it'll help provide some clarity. Um, so, Capella has been posting some incredibly beautiful imagery on social media and uh, with very high detail, very high resolution. So one of the question is, is what is the format of that imagery? Um, we were showcasing strip map SLC data today, mainly over the, uh, the airfield. Um, so what is the, uh, the, the specific product that uh, is most commonly showcased on, on your different uh, social media outlets and, and in the news? And, uh, and how is it uh, possible that you're able to collect such, uh, such um, detailed and, and uh, clear imagery? Great question. Um, so 
I guess to start off, the, the data format is offered in, in those two, soon to be three products where it's either SLC, uh, GEC or GEO. Um, I'm personally not familiar with the SLC, how the, the data format of, of SLC is, maybe Sean or, or Jason can comment on that, but uh, the GEC and the GEO products are of course uh, a one step more processed, they're offered as a GEO TIFF. Um, and so very widely compatible across uh, any number of, of either remote sensing software packages or uh, GIS software packages. Pretty much everything takes in a GeoTIFF. Uh, what you guys typically see on social media is our Geo product. So it is the more refined and rectified product. It's using the multi-look technology uh, to really reduce that, that backscatter speckle that, that you typically see with, with SAR data. Um, that's normally what we're posting. In most cases, we're posting a spotlight image, so our top resolution of 50 centimeters. Uh, in some cases, we're we're doing site mode or strip map mode as well, um, as as that's just some sometimes the way we've we've acquired the data for that particular application. Um, hopefully, that answers the question. No, wonderful. Um, another question came in for you, Andrew. Since we got you here, we might as well take advantage of it. Um, so what is the current revisit time for uh, any, for I guess, uh, guaranteed revisit time for different imagery on, on, uh, uh, with, on Earth and, and what, are, what are the goals or the aspirations for the Capella constellation uh, to get that down to? Fantastic question. So currently we have four satellites in orbit, one's in commissioning or, or two are still in commissioning, I should say. Um, and our planned constellation for this year is seven satellites in total. Um, once we have the seven satellites, uh, our, our typical revisit with standard look angles, so top image quality, standard look angles, um, you're looking at 10 to 12 hours anywhere around the globe. Um, if you do extended look angles, so you're you're opening up the the degree at which the the satellites are are, are looking, and you're willing to compromise a little bit on that image quality, um, we can get the the revisit time down to four hours per day uh, anywhere around the the Earth on average. Um, what I would say in in the current state with two commercial satellites operating, two in commissioning, uh, those times vary uh, based on location. Um, all of our satellites are not in the same orbit, so to be aware, we've got uh, two satellites in SunSync uh, and two satellites in in mid inclinations, so 45 degree, and I think the other one's 52 degree inclinations, and that rec that increases capacity in the equatorial region where where the long, uh, lines of uh, longitude are, are spread quite quite far apart, and that that's where you need the little extra uh, bump in in revisit capabilities. Wonderful, thank you, Andrew. Um, just going to keep. I'm going to give you a hat trick here, so natural hat trick. Um, hey, we are is, Canadian. We are Canadian, exactly. So, is the Capella console free, uh, freely available, or other apps available to identify or search the Capella SAR dataset? Uh, yeah, so the Capella console is uh, freely available and open to the public. Um, you still need to contact Capella and register to gain access. As a U.S. company under U.S. regulations, we do need to do denied parties checks and, and a few things to, to make sure uh, folks that are accessing the console and, and potentially the data have passed uh, those, those clearances. Wonderful. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a break now and uh, hand one another Perfect. question over, I think, for the Catalyst team. So this is asking uh, for Jason, uh, what segmentation and uh, object detection algorithm uh, was used in, in uh, the demonstration? I think, Jason, you might be on mute. Yeah, so for our, our own algorithm, it's very simple. Um, it's an, For our technology, it's just called OASeg. Um, that's all that's used for the segmentation. Okay, and then I can add a little bit to that. So the feature and then the, the classification, we have two different algorithms that are available. So we, we uh, leverage machine learning uh, capabilities with random forest as well as support vector machine. And it's been enhanced, as Jason mentioned, to work specifically with SAR data in order where it performs on the fly some filtering and SAR specific filtering, as well as um, performing some outlier uh, detection and removal in order to ensure that um, we're capturing the best possible uh, features. And this is done directly, correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, but on the uh, single look complex imagery. Yes, correct. That was done on the SOC. Wonderful. 
Um, so I think we have time. Well, we're at the top of the hour, so uh, we'll take one last question. Uh, since uh, once again we're we're here with Andrew, and uh, I'll allow us to uh, I'll go through one one more question for Capella. So, what is the minimum resolution spotlight images offered by Capella? And I think you might have covered this already. So maybe just go through the different uh, um, resolution options and uh, and um, I guess the footprints as well. A great question. Yeah. So the spotlight image is uh, delivered at 50 centimeters to the customer. Uh, it's a five kilometer by five kilometer footprint. Uh, of course, the the ground range resolution and azimuth resolution varies depending on look angle. Um, we can we can definitely reach out to to Capella to learn more about that. Um, but the site mode uh, is a one meter product. Uh, it's a five by ten kilometer standard footprint, and the strip map mode is a one point two meter product, and it is a five by twenty kilometer uh, standard footprint. Wonderful. So with that, unfortunately, we received well over uh, 50 questions uh, today through as I'm looking through the questions panel. And uh, we really appreciate everyone's interest and your attention uh, to this webinar. We will go through each one of these questions and answer them and post the, quest or post the answers to the questions with the recording of this webinar on our website. And we'll send you an email once that is made available. So I'd just like to take this opportunity to Thank uh, Andrew, thank Jason, um, so our panelists here, and then and also to thank everyone in the audience for taking this time out of your day to be to join us here. So once again, Andrew, thank you so much. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Sean, and and thanks everyone for attending. All right. Have a great we day. Hope have a, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care.